you mentioned um, earlier in the podcast, Erica is a sexual educator and a damn good at it. And if you're not following her Instagram grand page, stop right now, go follow it. Erica Smith dot sex dot ed. Um, so let's start one of our first topics. We're going to talk about <laughs> sex on your period. I feel like it's not talked about enough, but then if it is, it's just within tight circles and what's with your close girlfriends. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> let's start that off. I mean, Jill, what, when you think about sex on your period, what's the first question that comes to your head? So I'm not going to say that I haven't done it. I'm not going to, because I'll be a lie. I'll be a lie. Um, I've done it. But it's always, like, with with heavy restrictions. So, like, you know, you're not going to go down on me, you know, on my period. Absolutely not. Um, maybe in the shower. Uh, this may be too much. But I actually have had sex on my period with a tampon on. I've done that before on, like, the last couple days, thinking that that's going to stop, I don't know, something. Um, I've gotten, like, you know, I've gotten, like, fingered on my period before and like I'll be, I'll be like go to the bathroom right now like when it's all that go right now I don't even want to see a speck of my own blood um so what do I think about it I think mostly not but like I you know I've been with my partner for a long time so it's gonna happen with two women mm-hmm. you know that period don't stop nothing but a sentence so <laughs> it's not to go down um so go what do you think about sex on your period I mean, I'm not opposed to sex on a period. I, I don't find anything wrong with popping a tampon in and just continuing the. I mean, like you said, period don't stop none but a sentence. Let's <laughs> let's keep the party moving. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there's some cases like I'm not using tampons anymore, so mm. I'm I'm using a menstrual cup and I haven't felt comfortable enough to have sex on my period with a menstrual cup yet. Mm-hmm. So right now I'm I'm currently on my period and I'm not having sex on my period. <laughs> so, um, so is Erica? Is there a reason to avoid sex on your period? Um, th- th- it's such a complicated question. So there is nothing inherently bad or gross or dirty or wrong about having sex on your period. If you are in a relationship that you could get pregnant, you could still get pregnant on your period. There's no guarantee. So like if you're fucking someone that has sperm, the sperm could cause a pregnancy. Um, wow. If you are in a, if you're not monogamous in a relationship where you and your partner are like fluid bonded, that can be an issue. Um, it is blood. And so as blood does carry HIV in a positive person or hepatitis C in a person with hepatitis, that blood would present a risk um, if it got in somebody's orifices, like in their mouth, you know, stuff like that. So that's the risk. But if those are not issues for you, so like if you're in a monogamous relationship where you're having unprotected sex and there's no chance of pregnancy, then there's nothing, nothing inherently wrong with period sex. I didn't even think about hep C. I didn't even think. Yeah, like... Now we're going to sound super naive. Like, right? Don't worry about it. Hep C. Well, what is that? <laughs> yes. Hepatitis. Um, I mean, there's several different kinds of hepatitis, but the one that people commonly think of as sexually transmitted um, is a disease that affects the liver. And it's common in folks who are injection drug users. It's something that gets passed a lot by sharing needles. So, um, you know, it's, it's something that you could be at risk of if you have ever like been an injection drug user, had sex with injection drug users, not using protection. Okay. Interesting. And I mean, it can also be passed from like unclean tattooing practices. So that's why like even talking to people about um, making sure that your tattoos are done with proper precautions, clean needles, like that can even be part of talking about prevention when it comes to hep C. Right. Is there anything like, is period blood any more dirty than the blood that comes out when you get your blood drawn at the doctor? You know? No. Um, I think that it's all very charged by pe- like the mythology of it. Like people thinking that your body is unclean, especially if you're someone with a uterus and that what comes out of it is like dirty. And you know, there's like religious taboos around it. But the actual fact of the blood, it's, it's not going to be any different than any other blood. I mean, we know that there sometimes are clots in it, right? And sometimes things that look like they yeah, no, don't belong, like what is that stringy shit? Like, so there's that, but, um, you know, I, I don't think that it's inherently different or like worse than other blood. 
So you know the myth, I don't know if it's a myth, you tell me, you, when you have sex, your period stops. Uh, that is definitely a myth. Um, <laughs> I think that it's like, you know how sometimes your periods do random shit, like they go away for a day and then they come back? Yeah. That's probably like somebody experienced that and the timing was just perfect to make them think that they got their period like fucked out of them. But that's not something that can happen. Yeah. Okay, what happened if you have sex so if you have sex in water, for example, shower not just to be clean, but it stops your period if is you that get true? in water. Mm-hmm. How about that? Is that true? Um, no, but it's... Damn. Yeah, no, it doesn't. The thing about sex, like, if you're fully submerged in water and somebody is penetrating you vaginally, that can cause potential bacterial infections. Water's not good lube. Like, there, there's other issues, but it's, mm. it's not like a period stopper. So everything that I've been told up until this point has been a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> so I had one person a while back that I used to just mess around with and they would want to have sex with me when I had my period. Yeah. Only Some people are real into that. Yeah, really into it. It was kind of creepy. I'm like, why? The closeness, like she said, uh, fluid bonding. Yeah. So is that like a closeness between you two? I don't know. That's just is weird. It, is it just another fetish? You know, just like BDSM, is it just another fetish? Yeah, potentially it's somebody thinks it's hot just the way some people think like piss is, is sexy. Um, you know, people have their own things. I don't think period blood as something that turns someone on isn't that out there. Um, it's not out there in the realm of things that could be out there. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. In the realm of bodily fluids that people like to involve in sex, period blood is like not that weird. Cause you know, it's sometimes just there already. Um, if you are gonna have sex with someone on their period and you want to use protection, um, latex gloves are helpful for people that are like, you know, fingering each other, or fisting or doing anything vaginal. Um, condoms on sex toys, condoms on penises. Um, yeah, if you are not fluid bonded with someone, I probably wouldn't recommend going down on them when they have their period because yeah. it'd be hard to avoid probably. Is there anything you can do to, if you want to, you know, give someone some oral sex? Well, is there anything you suggest? Yeah, I mean, the, you both said tampons or menstrual cups. Like, they also make these disposable menstrual cups. Have you seen these? They're like... They used to be called Instead. That was the brand name. I don't know what their brand name is now, but they're these little like flexy things that you put up inside you and they catch the period blood, but then you throw them away. Oh! So, yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, so you can use any of those things and that would keep the blood from actually coming out. True. Yeah. And okay. I mean, like penetration while wearing those things probably isn't a good idea, but if you're just like, Messing around on the outside, clitoral stimulation, that would be fine. Yeah. And I really gotta recommend a towel. <laughs> you need a <laughs> messy. You need a period sex towel, preferably a darker color. Lay it on the bed. <laughs> yeah, don't you don't wanna you have, wanna have you don't wanna have to like deal with your sheets or staining anything. Yeah, so yeah, I can't really hear you. Can you come closer? You're a, uh, you know, you deal with sexual education and you're talking to young people all the time. Mm -hmm. But for you, was there a time where you were kind of like, where you were totally against it? And then like, what was your transition to like, you know what, I'm, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, consider period sex. Um, I feel like I've always been really open and didn't, I was not raised with shame around sex or my body. Mm -hmm. So I... I'm trying to remember, like, when did I first have period sex? It seriously was probably with my high school boyfriend. Mm. Like, I was with the same partner in high school for a really long time. It was a great relationship. I felt very comfortable, and I probably did it back then. Yeah. Interesting. Right. I had never really thought about it, so yeah. Yeah, I, I you know, um, I don't think I had period sex until my first girlfriend, maybe. Mm. Yeah. So that was probably 18, 19, I would say. Yeah, I would so, say. So, I ahead. was going to say, it's interesting if you are someone that has sex with cis men, um, they can have all sorts of feelings about period sex. I would not fuck a cis guy that was totally repulsed by it. Like, just wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Huh. Interesting question.
question, Jail. You answer it. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I think it was actually this relationship is the first time that I did it. Yeah, I really wasn't comfortable with it. I just thought it was so nasty. Honestly, every time I get my period, it feels like the first time I get it. I can't stand it. I just, I, I've never gotten used to it. You know, mentally, emotionally, it's like, ah, oh, here it is again. This dreaded ball and chain in my life. Yeah. I have a question for you all. Have you ever had double period sex where you both have your periods at the same time? Yup. That's my life every day. We both look at our periods all the time now. Yep. You're synced up. Synced. <laughs> I mean, same day. <laughs> That's got to be terrible for the house, though. Let's oh. You mean, terrible for her, for sure, because I'm the one who catches the attitude when it, and it, she's, she's a, she's the same when she has hers, you know? <laughs> so, okay, last, last myth breaker. Um, is it true that having sex on your period can alleviate cramps? Yes, having Ooh! orgasms. Yes, <laughs> this can be solo sex, get your vibrator out. If you have an orgasm, it can relieve some of the congestion in your pelvis and it releases endorphins, which make us feel better. So that that was always one of my go-to period cramp remedies. I, I had a hysterectomy last year because I had like really bad shit going on in my uterus that was really painful. Um, but when I had periods and they were really painful, I would just get out the magic wand and Sometimes it would provide just at least some distraction. Yeah. But yeah, orgasms can alleviate, help alleviate cramps. You heard it here, ladies. <laughs> Whoever has a period, get to it on your own. It's good for you. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. I feel enlightened. Thank you. For You're real. welcome. And so cool. Right. You were so right with those questions you brought up. Because I was like, oh, yeah, in the water, it's gone. We don't have our periods in the water. It's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> This is a fun topic of conversation. I think you're right. People don't talk about it enough. 